I mean, in the beginning, I never, ever, ever thought that he was anything other than what he said he was. You know, he was able to smooth things over every single time. He was really good. smart and I'm usually very cautious. There is a secret crime that many individuals across the United States don't talk about. Every single day in America, hardworking, trusting, and honest people lose thousands of dollars totaling up to $143 million a year. Welcome to Scanfield. Today we're going to talk to a woman named Cynthia, who's from Florida, that met a guy who said he was stuck in Brazil, who she met on eHarmony, that duped her out of tens of thousands of dollars after her husband passed away of cancer, to the point where she even had to remortgage her house multiple times. It's been incredible learning your story and just understanding like what you've actually been through. If you can just run through it and kind of let us know kind of what happened. Well, I was married. Um probably 25 years in 2016. And my husband was diagnosed with um, stage four glioblastoma, which is from the gecko, it's a terminal brain cancer. We started treatment in Boston, even though we lived in Florida because we originally came from Boston and from a medical standpoint, it's a lot better place to deal with that type of cancer. In the midst of his cancer, I was diagnosed with a fairly serious form of breast cancer. I became his caretaker as his health started to dwindle and do my own cancer treatment at the same time, which was exhausting emotionally. It was exhausting physically. There was a hurricane coming. We had to evacuate, which was a little bit stressful. Uh, I had to miss chemotherapy. He couldn't talk. We ran off to a different part of Florida to try to survive the hurricane not knowing what was going to happen to our home, which we had built, by the way. We built the house for ourselves to retire. That was our forever. That was our life. That was where we were going to spend our old age. But life had a different, a different trajectory for us. We came back from the hurricane in September, and he went down here very quickly. Um, he was still mobile, but we brought hospice in to get things in order. I had my last chemotherapy treatment the day before he passed away. He was... He was probably three days in a hospital bed in my bedroom, basically unconscious, yeah. And it was me, it was me and the dog. But I didn't know how hard it was until, again, I went out with this creepy guy, but realized that there was something, I could feel what I was missing, even though he was creepy. So that's when I decided that I would, I would see what the whole online dating scene was about. Well then, I was actually on my flight to London when the eHarmony guy popped in. And what was his name? His name was Glenn. Glenn. His name was Glenn Hoffman. Gave me his whole life story right off the bat. Uh, born, but again, <laughs> he was born in Atlanta. Um, but when he was five, they all moved to Germany because his father was in the military, you know, and he'd worked for Delta Airlines and he'd been in the Navy and yada, yada, yada. And uh, right off the bat, at one point, he had written just something that was just so lovely and, and deep. And, and I said to him, you've really blown me away with this. I, I don't know many men that think this way and are so verbose with their words about it. Um, and I don't know what made me do it, but I cut and pasted the whole thing he said and plopped it into Google. And up it popped out of some book of romantic whatevers. And I said to him, you know, we've had such a lovely day or two, and I, I feel like I've just been kicked in the gut. And he came back and he said to me, oh my gosh, are you sick? And I said, well, I'm not sure, that's up to you. I said, but I said, I gotta be honest with you. The stuff that you said to me the other night was so beautiful, and I don't know what made me think that it might not be you saying it. And uh, I said, so I Googled it, and lo and behold, you, you took this right off the internet. He immediately turned the whole thing around on me and, and talked about, you know, if I had used Shakespeare, would you be so upset? And words are words and they're there for anybody to use and rationalized the whole thing. And 
So I thought, well, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. But then he came back to me and he said, do you know what you've done, Cynthia? And I'm like, no. And I thought he was going to say something kind of cute. And he says to me, you have almost blown this whole relationship that we're starting to build here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have? I didn't mean to do that. I just, I said, I would, whatever you want to say to me, I'd much rather it be from you than from anybody. Even if that, you meant every single word of that, I just would really rather have your words. And every time I challenged him, that's, he would always turn it around on me. Well, when we first met, he told me that he didn't want to be piloting forever. Um, and he had been working on starting his own international business. Either He was either going to do car exporting or some sort of real estate. So off he went to Atlanta, um, put in his bid to, to sell this dealership in Brazil, I don't know, 49 cars or something. Um, and two days later, to, told me he got the contract and without me even asking, sent me a copy of the signed contract. He got, no, he got all the cars and he got them all to Brazil. He got them all to Brazil. And that's when he started asking me for money. He had lent this friend a quarter of a million dollars to keep his business afloat. And so I'm gonna reach out to him first. So I said, good. If he owes you a quarter of a million dollars, you should have no problem getting 30 and it's been a year. so. Um, and he said, and I haven't ever asked for it back. And I said, well, good, you do that. Um, then, of course, you know, he came back and, oh, the guy doesn't have it right now. You know, in a couple of months, he'll be able to give me 60. But right now he can't give me anything. So, And uh, I, I don't know how he convinced me. I don't know how he convinced me on that one. Supposedly, the friend that could give him 60 gave him 60. And then he came back to me. Um, and I didn't, um, I didn't give him 60, but I gave him something. And honestly, I just assumed not even vomit out the total amount of money that I gave him unless you absolutely insist. But, but at some point it became staying in the relationship on the off chance that this whole thing was real and I was actually gonna get my money back. I sold my house twice. I sold my house twice. I sold it once and rented it back for a ridiculous amount of money because he said to me, well, I'll be home and we can buy it back or we can leave or, um, and then when I couldn't afford that ridiculous rent anymore, I sold it for real. The first time I sold it, he got the proceeds. I mean, I did, I had a huge mortgage on the house. It's not like I owned it outright, but, but what I sold it for, he got most of it. And the second time I sold it, I kept it all. I took advances on my credit cards. I pretty much wiped out my 401k. Um, and I went and I didn't know that this was wrong, but I he he would give me names and bank accounts of people that I had accounts in local banks. I went to Chase, I went to TD Bank, I went to Wells Fargo, and I had done a, a, a large deposit into an account at, at Chase Bank. And um, and the money was pending, apparently, in the guy's account. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't pending anymore. So is he saying he's still in Brazil then? He's still stuck in Brazil? Yeah, yeah. Now it's because now it's because the last bit of money to get him home, Stephen, who's supposedly been his driver and bodyguard through all this, and who I've talked to on the phone, supposedly, um, Stephen uh, borrowed the money from drug barons. And if he doesn't pay it back, they're going to kidnap his children and burn down his house. And so Glenn can't pot Glenn's free to leave Brazil now, but he can't because Stephen's been so good to him all this time and he can't possibly leave. I asked him if there were any new developments in his life. And he said, no, are there any new developments in your life? I mean, like nothing was going on at all. Yeah. It's kind of like he's washed his hands of the whole story because he knows that there's no more money coming. And honestly, I'm not really sure why. Um, maybe they, if they hang on long enough, but there's just nothing. The conversations are, are his sentences are two and three word sentences and mine aren't, aren't much more. And so I really believe with all my heart that as hard as this is, it's gonna, excuse me. Oh. 
I will absolutely be able to use it for somebody else's good. And what message do you have for people that might be going through similar things as you or, or people that are starting to go down this path and maybe and are watching this video and, and some of these signs are things that they're experiencing right now with their the person they met? First of all, do your homework. If they give you a story, Google it. Because good gracious, I think if you Google online dating prospect in the military, you're going to get everything you need to know. Um, and and for me, I've, I've finally decided, and this is really hard for me, that I believe with all my heart that that one of the things we, we learn in our faith is that, you know, sometimes we need to get out of the way to let God do what he needs to do with us. Um, and, you know, I've been just trying so hard to fill a void. I've been trying so hard to find a person to, to fill this slot. And, and I think that at some point I was probably willing to settle for less than I deserve. So I would say to anybody, I can't speak to men because they think very differently than women, but, but for any woman out there, um, and again, I'm still learning and I'm not sure I believe it yet, but we need to be comfortable and strong and in, in secure in, in the women that God made us to be. My, my recommendation to you, um, I would definitely go and contact the FBI, the police. It doesn't mean you're going to get your money back. Right. No, but, I know. But there might be some money out there or at least some ties. Like if you're depositing money to other people's accounts and he was telling you that they're relatives or friends that are going to help like get the money to him or like maybe they're involved somehow and they can go after them. I will. I just need to get past the shame of spitting it out. And hopefully I'll find somebody who's at least a little bit compassionate. Because I know people are going to think, you know, lady, you're just a fool and you deserve what you get. But there are people that, that aren't, that know how this works or that have, have somebody in their family. Or I mean, I know that people take their own lives over this stuff. That's just unthinkable. This is like the worst type of scam because it's not just... You know, you hear different scams where, you know, they go and they, you know, steal $500 for uh, utilities and, you know, scamming you out of different things like that. And then they're gone, right? And then they disappear. But this is the worst type of scam because they get you emotionally attached and they just take everything out of you and everything from you. And right. it's, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. They're stripped um, naked, basically. Yeah, emotionally and financially. <clears throat> well, stay strong. You know, like I said, this will pass. This will pass for sure. Um, we really, truly appreciate you, you know, telling your story and, and being courageous, courageous enough to do it. I know there's probably a lot of, you know, emotions that you're going through right now and that you've gone through. Um, so I definitely appreciate you taking the time to, to tell it. You know, hopefully this will help somebody out, you know, in the same situation. You know, we're here for you. If, if you need anything, just feel free to reach out at any time, okay? Oh, thank you, David. No problem. Well, you have a great evening. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. No worries. You take care and God bless. All right, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.